Welcome everyone to another episode of Chop It Up Sunday. So we have this giant kukri made out of 440C, four titanium pins, carbon fiber scales, red G10 liners. Now I'm not sure if I'm in the camera or not because I can't see what's going on. If I stand this way behind it, give the camera a chance to focus. Hopefully I'm not moving it too fast. Okay, so Edie's really seeing a knife here. Um, all right, so we're going to call this one Nemesis. Thanks for the comments. Um, whether it was intentional or not, uh, three suggestions or comments that led to suggestions for names, and I think because of the, the demonic look of this, the evil look of this, the apocalyptic look, I'm going to call it uh, Nemesis. It's the big the evil character in the movie um, Resident Evil, and I'm trying to shine, reflect the sunlight on, on the camera, just to see what it looks like. Um, Goliath would have been a good one, very fitting. Whether that was intentional or not, I don't know, but uh, definitely sparked my imagination. Little John, I'll save for another, another knife because Little John pretty much represents how peaceful and sympathetic and and how much empathy a big guy could have, uh, which is this, not this. This is definitely a, a massive cleaver chopper. Um, and uh, Brett, you had a good suggestion too, which I'll use for something else. All right, so let's go into our demonstration. We have a cardboard packing tube, which I've showed in other videos. Uh, same kind of material, came from the same supplier, so the, the uh, performance could be compared to the, the cast sword, short sword that I made, to the katana, to a small machete, troll, what was it called, troll machete, by another knife maker. Uh, that one is a thinner stock of steel. And a little shorter, as well as an axe. I think I compared it to an axe. This is 440C. Uh, the steel came from Admiral Steel. Uh, heat treat, Peter's heat treat. It weighs 3.3 pounds. It's pretty heavy. Pretty most of the weight is right here in the front. Uh, I did design it so you can, with this finger choil here, you can't choke up on it and get a two or three hand grip on it. And when you choke up on it, it's much more maneuverable. Uh, either for some sort of um, defensive swing, close quarters if you had to, uh, for thrusting if you had to, for draw cutting, if you had to draw cut, you can do that as well. So it's more balanced, a little more nimble, but still it's, it's a lot of weight. I hollowed out the, the center here, put in a big folder, and then put the rock pattern in. So uh, although it looks very big, it's actually uh, fairly thin here. It's actually thicker above and below the center. Uh, kept the, the, the spine thick just for strength, and it's a full tank construction for the balance as well as for the strength. Uh, so enough of that. We've got a packing tube. We have a 2x4, which I like to chop with one chop, and I've got a ham with bone. Uh, the meat is expired. It was in the back of the refrigerator. We forgot to cook it. It's about two months expired, and the wife and I are not going to do anything with it, so sacrifice it. For our chop it up Sunday bit. Okay, let's see how we do. There we go. That's a much better chop. So my katana, 1060 steel, differentially uh, heat treated, had a nice hormone on it, bent on the way through. Well, if this is not going to stay sturdy, it's not going to work. I tried this way with other um, swords, and it's difficult to chop this because it tends to flex. Uh, this with compression, it holds up, it resists, therefore allows it to get cut. Here it's going to probably flex and it won't cut too well. But let's see what happens. That was impressive.
That was a sloppy cut. And uh, a little bit of a hot spot. Alright, I was hoping for one cut. I was hoping for one cut. Two cuts. I was hoping for one cut. I know the Kaz does it in two cuts. And I was hoping with an extra pound of steel and most of it in the front, this would be more of a cutter and the Kaz more of a slicer. I'm not seeing that, so they seem to be equally well cutter slicer so this is overbuilt let's see what happens one hand in the back with a lot of force let me put this here just for support nothing goes flying at me should be wearing safety glasses should be wearing safety glasses. Here we go. Yeah, this wood is proving to be a little denser than I thought. Just trying to stick with the uh, delivered a good cut there. It went through 80%, 90% of the wood with one cut. Diagonal. And there's a big knot that runs across the wood. One. And two. Okay, so this is performing. All right, here we go. Okay. That's more than not what I expected. That's about almost three inches in. Okay. It's more like it. Guy needed a little warm up. This part will be easy. <laughs> I don't try hard. <laughs> Uh, okay, again. You really have to whack it. I've got to, maybe that's my problem. I'm not, I'm not driving through. Save that piece of the cars. Because that's my last piece of wood. I've got a knot here. i got a knot here. I'm going to try to cut between the knots. This is right there. Okay. Let's try one more. I saw that coming. I saw that coming. Okay, it's a two cut, two swing cutter at best. Uh, again, Again, this guy isn't, I haven't sharpened it. And uh, no knots here. Much more comfortable handle, even though it's not as durable. Much more comfortable handle because the leather is compressible and the nylon's compressible. So let's see what she can do. Okay, so, previous experiments, I'm repeating myself over and over again, I apologize. Previous experiments with the dry wood that I used before in the other video also showed that this guy would use three, three or four chops to go through. This is dry wood. I don't have fresh wood. I should have made this big with a fresh, fresh piece of 2x4. Uh, 
So we'll have to compare it to the to the drier wood. Try this again. having trouble. Let me just make sure I got this recorded. Am I recording? Yes, I am. All right. So, really no need to go any further. Not exactly what I was hoping to test with. Oops. Split the wood. I don't know what this smells like, but uh, and obviously I don't think I can repeat this test. I'm not going to use my, I'm not going to use the uh, sweating from the uh, it was cold floor refrigerator. I'm not going to use the uh, the cast sword. I want to keep that clean because the cast sword. Okay, I'm going to need some kids to help me clean this up. That's a line from Dell's video. Brother Dell. Okay, just eyeing it up again. I got a bone that seems to go from here to the back, only I don't see it in the back. So I'm going to cut it this way, cut that bone at an angle. This might be gross. Let's see what happens. And this is for me anyway. Oh, and I went through the wood. And I went through the wood. Guys, check this out. Check the size of that bone. Check the size of that bone. I said it was an inch. Well, it's a little thicker than an inch. That's almost a two inch long, wide, two inch wide bone. Let me get the other piece. I gave it a good whack. I only had one chance at it. Dude, that's probably the neck, the size of a neck vertebrae. Or a femur. Am I in camera? I can see that. Let's see, move this one over. There we go. Holy cow. I did not expect that. That is... Oh, it doesn't smell so bad. That is... Holy cow. Right there. Holy cow. That's impressive. And look how deep it went into the, uh, into the stump. Let me just wipe my hand. Like this. Here we go. Pan back. So it went through almost a two inch wide at the widest part, two inch wide bone and all that meat. One strike. Let me see if this angle is any better. And through the trunk. Focus. Focus. There you go. The carnage. The destruction. The bacon. Well, it's not bacon, Sam. One strike. Not bad. Makes me wonder what the cow's sword would be able to do. All right, as we pan back and look at the carnage, I say that this test was successful. Um, so, in summary, the 2x4 that I used was harder than I expected, harder than I wanted. I think getting two, three cuts... Um, to chop it was impressive, as equally impressive as the cast sword. Income, but still a keeper. Still love it. Okay, so, oh, let's do a, little, a sharpness test to see how the edge held up. 440C. Cutting through some bone. Get some paper here. Let me just uh, wipe it off a little bit. Has some sap, has some 
juices in there. Alright, I'm not going to cut here because that's perhaps it hasn't been used. I'm just going to cut this area here that's all gunked up. And it still slices nicely. Just going ever so lightly. Still slices nicely. Cut that steak at uh, ham again. <laughs> Come on, is there an area I didn't cut yet? Here, right here. Last one. The last piece of wood. Yeah, I gotta give it a little more oomph. You know what I mean? I'm kinda going too lightly with it. Going too lightly. It, it practically went all the way through. Practically went all the way through. Alright, where else? Where else? Do I have anything left I can chop? Last piece. Alright, this is the last piece because I've got nothing else but a mess here. For dense wood, for dry, dry two by four, I think two chops is rather impressive. Rather impressive, but not worth the extra weight. Okay, guys. So, thank you for your comments. Thank you for your time. I know there's a lot of videos you guys like to watch, a lot of knife makers. So I really appreciate you guys spending your free time, which none of us really have, watching my videos. Welcome to another episode of Top It Up Sunday. Not too sure if I'm, if I'm in the camera because what the fuck? Is <laughs> cicada went up my arm. That's not making it to the video. Welcome everyone to another episode of Chop It Up Sunday. <laughs> 